Good morning. Rachel Remen tells a story about what was one of the angriest uh, uh, people she'd ever met. Uh, this was a young man who had been in, he was in college. He was an athlete, and he had got uh, sarcoma of the of his leg, and they had to amputate his leg at the knee. And all his dreams were gone, and he was very very angry. And he was doing all kinds of things. Uh, he was drinking. He was using drugs. He was mistreating people who loved him. And he was uh, even having a lot of automobile accidents. He was living recklessly. And one of his coaches referred him to uh, Rachel. And when he came, uh, he just began to rant and rave about all the people who were well. He hated them. He felt angry about every one of them and what they, uh, the blessing they had and what he had lost. And as they continued to do that, uh, she, he continued to talk like this over a few sessions. But one day he came and he had a piece of paper in his hand. It was a newspaper article about a boy who had had a motorcycle accident and had lost his leg. And he began to describe how this boy must need some help. And then as he got up that day and started to leave, he turned back to Dr. Remen and he said, is there, maybe there's some people that I could help if you could get them to me. So she said she'd look around the hospital and see who they could find. And they found people to, who were having issues and they referred him to them. And he would go visit with them. And shortly after, they would begin to be better because he had a knack of helping them with their issues. And he said, she said one of the best stories was about a young girl who uh, had uh, came from a family with breast cancer. Her mother had died, one of her sisters had died, a cousin had died of it, and she had another sister who was in chemotherapy. And so she took it on her own hands and she had both breasts removed. And she was in despondent and she was blue and she wouldn't look at him. And when he came into the room he was wearing shorts with his artificial leg showing. And he came and she wouldn't look at him, she wouldn't talk with him. So once, so what he did was he reached down and he unloosened the, the uh, his prosthesis, and he laid it aside and he started the dancing on one foot, and he was making certain some strange kinds of noise. And she got up, she woke up, or she lifted her eyes and she looked at him, and when she looked at him, she laughed, and that was the beginning of her healing. And the interesting thing is that they, she began then to go with him to other patients in the hospital. And ultimately, she became his wife. And the, one of the last sessions she had with this man, Rachel had with this man, was she was in the, they were in the room together and she was getting ready. She reached into the folder and she pulled out the picture that had been uh, drawn before of this break of the vase that was cracked and broken. And she gave it to him and said, do you remember this picture? And he said, yes. But he said, it's not finished. And she said, he said, give me some crayons. And so she gave him a, some crayons. And he took a yellow crayon and he began to, from the crack, he began to uh, have a radiation of light beams flowing from the crack. And, she, and uh, uh, she looked at him and she said, what does that mean? And he said, that's where the light shines through. And oh, wouldn't that be wonderful if we could see the places where we are so angry about what life has done to us and begin to let healing come to them and ultimately they, they become the place where the light shines through. We can be wounded people but the light can shine through the cracks in our lives and it can bless others. I'm praying that I can learn how to do that with my life and that you can do the same with yours. May God grace us today.